Is it nature or nurture? What makes an elite athlete? We're going to look at that question today with the help of a recent book by David Epstein called The Sports Gene. Hi, I'm Dr. Labby. I'm an ophthalmologist and sports vision specialist with 30 years experience in the field of sports vision. Today, we want to look at the idea of nature versus nurture. Is it your genetics that helps you become an elite athlete? Or is it the training that helps you become an elite athlete? In 1993, a researcher in Scandinavia named Ericsson published a paper talking about something that's become very fashionable. Many other authors have talked about this, and that's the idea of the 10,000 hours of practice needed to become an expert. The original paper was aimed at piano players, and Ericsson showed in that paper that 10,000 hours of practice is what was required for the expert piano players. And if you looked at the novice piano players, as we do in this table here, they had much, much less practice over the intervening years. Whereas the expert piano players had significantly higher amounts of practice to become experts. From this paper came the idea that if you put in the time, you could become an elite athlete or an expert in any field. Well, that may or may not be the case. In fact, athletes have looked at 10,000 hours of practice as being a goal for many years. The elite golfer Gary Player once said that the more I practice, the luckier I get. Well, the more he practiced, the more successful he got, and he thought about that being from luck, but in fact, it was the practice, along with his skill, that probably is what helped him do it. So it's not just a matter of practice. There might be another piece to this puzzle. In his book, The Sports Gene, David Epstein talks about, in the book, many different examples of people who perform a ton of practice and people who have genetic abilities to make them elite athletes, trying to understand which one is more important. In fact, he talks about the example of Jenny Finch, who was an Olympic gold medal pitcher for the United States softball team, facing one of the best batters in Major League history, Albert Pujols from the St. Louis Cardinals, at one of the All-Star Games several years ago. At that game, Jenny Finch pitched to Albert Pujols, and Albert wasn't able to hit anything, I believe he even struck out, as did many of the other Major League All-Stars when they tried to hit Jenny Finch's pitches. Well, on first glance, you would think that they should have no trouble. The softball is much larger than a baseball. It's at a slower speed coming towards them. It's pitched underhand. You would think they'd be able to easily hit the ball. So why did they strike out? What was wrong? Well, it was that lack of experience, that lack of 10,000 hours. Albert and the others had spent many, many hours hitting pitchers, major league pitchers from 60 feet away, and picking up the slight cues of their hands as they throw the pitch, the initial spin of the ball, to predict how it was going to cross the plate. That vision, that vision training, that vision experience enabled them to understand from early on how to pick up subtle clues to know how to hit the ball. When they faced Jenny Finch, they had somebody who was closer. They had somebody who was pitching underhand with a ball that didn't have seams to spin. And all the different clues that they would use to try to hit the ball weren't there anymore. And of course, they were not successful. To be fair, my guess is that if the baseball players had spent 10,000 hours hitting against Jenny Finch, they would have done pretty well because they would have learned how to pick up those clues. Epstein, in his book, makes the point of the difference between hardware and software. The idea that software is the training. Software is at 10,000 hours. Hardware is genetic basis that you have, your innate skill to, to, to perform as an elite level. Well, one of the genetic pieces, one of the hardware pieces is your height. If you're a basketball player, you can imagine you'll have more trouble making it into the NBA if you're short. In fact, if you're about six feet, six two or so, you probably have a five in one million chance of getting into the NBA. On the other hand, if you have the genetics to make you tall, you're let's say between six ten and seven feet, you probably have about a one in five chance of making it in the NBA. So there certainly is some genetics involved in becoming an elite professional athlete, but it may not be only genetics. Another example of genetics is a Finnish cross country skier who had a genetic mutation that allowed him to have more red blood cells in his body than normal. Well, having more red blood cells allows your body to carry more oxygen. More oxygen allows your muscles to work longer and work harder before you become out of breath. In fact, elite cyclists like Lance Armstrong and others train in high mountains constantly prior to their, their races in order to develop naturally that increased red blood cell count because that's what happens when you're at high altitudes. So they have more blood cells when they get down to normal altitudes to race in the race. That's something that Illegally, you can't just infuse red blood cells, but if you train, you train and that's how you come naturally. So the idea of genetics, the idea of height, the idea of more red blood cells plays a role as well. So at the end of David Epstein's book, we kind of get the feeling that is, there is no sports gene. There is no single one gene 
that's going to allow people to become elite athletes. And there isn't any amount of practice that's going to allow somebody to become an elite athlete. What it really needs is a combination of the two. You need to have skill, you need to have ability, and you have to be able to use that ability through many, many hours of practice in developing your talent in order to perform well and to become an elite athlete. So if you think you have the talent, there's nothing better you can do than to make your eyes as well, as perfect as they can, allow you to make that practice, that, that training as useful as possible to perform at your best.